Welcome, friends and enemies, to episode 87 of the Adventures of the Bay Growers. We've got everybody here. We've got Simon. Oh, hello. We've got Ed. Hello. We've got Catherine. Oh, I didn't see you there. <laughs> we've got Jess. Hello. <laughs> and we've got Adam. Bonjour. When last we left our heroes, you were on board the flying city of Eilina, having gone there at the request of Manchun, leader of the Black Network, in order to be rubbish spies upon a meeting that was taking place there, led by the lady, a figure from some of your pasts and possibly some of your futures. And you decided that you would scope out the city after a little bit of frustration with Flint going around a residential area looking for magical items and just looking into people's houses instead. You tracked down finally with Elsie's help the closest market area. Elsie decided that she wanted to look into uh, milliners and buy some hats for Erelor, and so you had a bit of discussion about what sort of styles you were after with the proprietress of the shop. Then Saluk saw some shinies and decided to go into a jewellery shop where there was a Triton and the proprietor of the shop, and a little bit of discussion that didn't go terribly well for Saluk, mainly because he didn't really read the arrogance and annoyance of the Triton individual. He then decided that he liked the look of a particular brooch, I believe. Was it a brooch? I can't remember. It was. Yes, a particular brooch that he then just took, not realising that you have to pay for stuff, not being familiar with that particular more of society. And this led to a rather frustrating cul-de-sac where he was accused of stealing, didn't understand the idea of stealing, tried to go to his friends whilst the owner of the shop was accusing him of this, handed off the stolen item to Elsie, who put it away in her bag. After a little bit of discussion with the city guard, you went back into the shop, them having decided that they would keep you around whilst they investigated. The difficulty was that the shop owner didn't know what the item was so investigated round eventually the item was found much to Elsie and Saluk's annoyance and to a degree to Errolor's particularly as she ended up paying the fine that is where we are left as Juniper and Flint are returned to the group having brought back some frozen yog herd and Saluk tried to go into the upper city found a queue of people and then scoped it out and found a tramp, and now he's off near an alleyway, near the very highest tier of this three-tiered cake of a city. Adam, you have your hand up. Yes. Didn't we fight them? No. No. No, was there was... the other guards that we pissed off. No, there were no... Uh, fi- okay. In a rare occasion, there were no fisticuffs this time. Oh. It was incredibly out of character, actually. Uh. So... So Luke, you are close to the mm-hmm. upper city. The rest of you are gathered nearby in the square. What would you like to do? Where were we going? You were originally looking for magical items because Flint thought that perhaps the city would have some antiques that weren't quite antiques, but also magic that he might not know about. And unfortunately, summarily failed in this endeavor. And so I think Sir Luke perhaps decided that he wanted to have a look in the upper city in case he could find any intel on the meeting or he was just looking around. I don't really know. If I remember, yes, I was looking to see if there was any sort of way in, having gone off in a hub and wanted to get back on track with the mission. Yeah. yeah. So you found an archway that appeared to be guarded with a queue of people mm-hmm. that looked like a way in. So Luke had found out you'd need papers of some description to get to the gates and that the walls weren't really scalable at all. Mm. Apparently well, that's, the walls weren't nearly tall enough. That's perhaps what, what it appeared to Sir Luke. You didn't investigate as in talk to anyone, but because there was a queue, you inferred that, I think. Of the people around us, mm-hmm. of our party, who is the one that would look the least out of place, would you say? Probably Errolor. <laughs> what are you, are you given, given that she wears robes yeah. and carries a staff around and she rich excuse me is the small talking dog not the most <laughs> <laughs> mm, 
One day we'll go to a talking dog. We will. (laughs) And I will do all of the stealthing, but not this day. Just Sylvanian families. Oh, my word. Yeah, but it's the really... If we ever do a one-shot, can that be it? (laughs) It, Yeah, but it's the really sweary meme version. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. I can bring props. <laughs> I just need to travel back to my parents' house first. I mean, that would be easy, surely. Yeah. Stopping that. Can I go lock down harder? <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> no, um, no, that was the joke, Adam. Well done. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> so do we know where Sir Luke is? Has he returned or...? I didn't sneak off. He saw uh, where I'd gone. Oh, okay. I look at Aralor, look at the queue of people and go... Do you want to try and go and see if you can get some info of why they're queuing and how to possibly get through? Sure. I'll walk over to someone in the queue and say, what's this queue for, please? Okay, so you walk over to an individual who is around as tall as you are. They look human. They are wearing clothes that you would associate with the surface rather than the city and appear to have a rather large traveling bag on their back, which suggests that they are a trader of some kind. They have a bald head and a skinny beard. It doesn't look like they've been growing it for terribly long and they're maybe trying it out. And as you come up to them, they turn towards you and give you quite a pleasant smile and say, oh, I don't really know. I just uh, I wanted to head into the city, the the upper part, and uh, I saw people queuing and hoped that I would um, just be let in. Hmm. Uh, it seems that the queue has been moving fairly quickly, though, so uh, I, I, nobody seems to be uh, presenting any papers or uh, anything official. I think it's just busy at this gate, maybe. Can I see the other end of the queue? You can, yes. It's about five people deep at the moment, okay. and the individual at the front is just talking to the guards and seems to be asking for directions. Oh, okay. rather than it being necessarily a more formal So it is definitely a queue that is to get into the upper part of the city. It's hard to tell. The queue seems to continue through oh, the okay. gate. So it might be that it's a queue for something else that this person has just accidentally joined. I will walk to the other end of the queue and sort of stand at the entrance and try and see if I can walk through without anyone stopping me. Okay, so let me just see. But in a self-aware way, like a polite way, you know, looking around, not a sneaky way. Okay. So the female guard who is standing on the left-hand side, which is where the queue isn't going, because that's the easiest way to go. And the gate isn't massive, but it isn't tiny either. So you can actually go in without having to scooch around. She looks at you and you just see a tuft of her blonde hair as her head turns, just poof out of the helmet. And she sort of has to blow it out of her eye. And then goes, um, where are you going, may I ask? Well, I was just coming to see if we could actually come through this gate without joining the queue. Oh, well, uh, yes, uh, this queue is for one of the emporiums on the other side. If you were simply wanting to investigate the upper city, you are welcome to go through. Do you need directing anywhere? Are you looking for anyone in particular? Let me just grab my travelling companions, because right. they might have an opinion on that. All right, and then very I'll good, go very good. One. I, I'm licking the bottom of my yoghurt pot. <laughs> I'm doing the same. My beard is very messy at this point. <laughs> That's just a Tuesday. <laughs> my day is a twit. <laughs> so it seems like we can just go straight through. Yeah. But they asked us if we wanted directions anywhere. Could be useful. And the salute has got some bearings of above but it might be good to have some more concrete directions especially if we're looking for uh, meetings might be taking place mm. yeah what are we looking for just a, a meeting place do we have any more information <clears throat> yeah i think so okay so how surreptitious do we want to be about this are we just going to go around asking people do you know about this strange clandestine meeting that's taking place and where that might be just so that we might be able to not go yeah. If I remember rightly, we're not actually, we're the pretend infiltrators, aren't we? Yeah, we're the decoy spies. That's the word. Mm. So, but I also don't want to get kicked out, particularly. Yeah. Or arrested. And we don't want to be Again. so bad that we're 
obviously a distraction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I suppose we could just ask, are there any communal meeting places? Hireable spaces. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do, you, do you have any rehearsal have a conference centre? <laughs> but no, yeah, uh, we can meld it in and go, are there any communal places of worship? Any communal places of commerce meetings? And That said, wouldn't a meeting like this be held in a private space? Yeah, true. Like an office? Maybe we need an information broker hmm. type person. What, if... like the... Where do, where do I have recollection of buying information that was in from hell. someone? Was that in hell? <laughs> yeah. Oh, God, we've been to so many places. The trouble with using someone like that is that then they can sell the, the information of having seen us asking about it well, to someone else. But possibly that may actually work in our advantage mm. because that then might lead them to us rather than the real spies. But do we really want that to happen? I think we can see how our employer does. Mm. Well, we've learned that we can fend for ourselves quite easily. Are we being paid for this? I can't remember. <laughs> no, it's a favour that you don't think you owe that Manchu owe. thinks you owe. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're definitely not being paid enough for getting arrested. Uh, so, and this is partly Flint asking, and partly me because I wasn't there <laughs> at the session when Manchu gave us this job. So, what is our aim? We're, we're decoy spies so as not to attract attention towards the real spies or yes yes right so our aim is potentially to be loud only if we want to i think we could also be genuinely getting information hmm. do we need to be loud now or loud later not now i'm but saying just checking to see if she's about to make loads of noise <laughs> <laughs> And her paw is just pun. her <laughs> paw is just reaching for the loot. <laughs> okay, I meant, do we need to be very fake spies now, or should we wait till we're at the meeting and then be more fake spies? Yes, I would say that I think there's no harm in us actually doing some actual spying because you guys have some shady history with this lady. I have no idea who she is, but I'm sure she's probably got something nice that I can borrow. I guess the other question is, do we want Manchu getting whatever information he might be hoping to glean from this meeting? I mean, as far as I'm concerned, he's obviously working against the lady because she's there, unless she's the other spy, but that would be strange. And therefore, we don't mind him getting dirt on her because we don't like her either. But yeah, but it's the ladies holding the meeting, isn't she? So mm. she's not going to be spying on herself, or is she? Are we actually spying on her on her behalf? You notice <laughs> Maud's eyes go a little bit crossed <laughs> as she tries to fathom this. Maybe um, we could get a job as catering with all of our beer samples. I, but well, that would risk accidentally getting a different job for a completely irrelevant meeting. Yeah. <laughs> I think it depends what you want to do regarding Manchun. I don't think he's a good man to double cross. So if you don't want him to get the information, then I don't think it's a good idea for us to foil his other spies. Mm -hmm. I, I think either we need to go through with the we're bad spies idea or we need to try and be good spies, and then we can corroborate the other good spies' information. Mm. I think we should do that and then have a nice, easy meeting with Manchun where we can say, we did the job, please leave us alone, we don't yeah. owe you any more. Yeah, that's definitely how interactions with criminals work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. We don't want him to start thinking that we owe him for anything else. No. True, particularly getting us out of a situation like this. So how are we going to find out where the meeting is? Do we know when the meeting is? Do we know exactly what day? It's not terribly clear. It's in a little under two weeks now because of the time that it took you to travel to the teleportation circle, which I kept forgetting. And I've been editing recently and I went, oh, yeah. <laughs> so it's maybe a week and a half according to the time frame, but you're not exactly sure what time and what day. I mean, 
is there anything stopping the other spies from knowing that? I mean, do the other spies know that we're going to be here I as was, well? I was just thinking the same thing, that wouldn't it have made sense for us to have made a connection with the real spies? Because we could end up trying to spy in the place that they're going to spy. But if our purpose here is to keep all attention away from them, then if we get caught, then they might be able to link it back to the other group, which defeats mm. the point. The lady is, you know, <clears throat> she's not a completely private person. People are aware of her. So maybe so it's asking about her. Why don't we find out where she's staying? Well, we could ask for somebody of her vague description. Mm -hmm. Do we know her name? Or is it just lady? Her name is the lady. <laughs> oh. <laughs> But right. that's her title, and so it's in a way that's better because mm. it's do, more noticeable. Do we know who the other spies are? No. You do. I'll do it. Do we? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Elsie, you were the one to ask Manchun whether it was Vigo. <gasps> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh. Okay. We <laughs> it's can been maybe a while. find that. It's been a while. It's fine. <laughs> Is it just him on his own? Uh, that's all Manchun said. Oh. I feel like it'd be easier to find him than to find the lady. <laughs> we just Ironically, considering he's a spy. <laughs> we just search all the bars. Yeah. Does anyone have any... Oh, no, I'm, like, the most magic-y person. Does anyone have anything that can find an object or something that we know that he's carrying? I mean, I have truffle. That's probably one of the things. I mean, I've already sent him up, but if we're actually on the level that... Like, I have heard Vigo's voice enough that I can mimic it perfectly. We can find you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, El else, how does that help us find him? Because I could be walking around pretending to talk like him, which and then he, might... And he hears his own voice, which lures him in. Because... Yeah. What? If we, if we found someone that knew him, then yeah. you could speak to them and say, meet me in this place. No, oh, meet, yes, me, like... meet me where I'm staying in 20 minutes, <laughs> and then we could just follow them. What but we do don't like, know that. <laughs> I, I, put, I put my little paw up. Um, I could enter his dreams. <laughs> <laughs> please, <laughs> Michael, please, can we have an Inception episode? Please. <laughs> we got to go deeper. Uh, we got to go deeper, honey. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, what? I'm so on board for this. <laughs> uh, can we all enter his dreams? I have a dream spell and I or someone I touch can go into a trance and access this person's dreams. I mean, it should definitely God. be you. So what happens if we all touch you? Do we all enter the dream? I think it's just... <laughs> <clears throat> I think it's just one person at a time, but it would be fun. I've I'm never happy done to it sit before. here for the whole episode and just watch Jess <laughs> in a dream. <laughs> just in, so we're clear. Just in folding <laughs> corridors. No need to jump back and forth. I'm perfectly happy. <laughs> That's be like we. Errolor, how are you? She's fine. For every one of the actions that Jess gets, we get one. Something like that. Just for the time dilation. It's just, the time she sent all of us in, the first person's been there for 84 years. <laughs> and then the end of the episode is just a D4 spinning on its point. <laughs> <laughs> but audio. Well, uh, that how could long work. Does it last for? I can be in the dream for up to eight hours. <laughs> Real time. That's eight episodes, Michael. <laughs> um, Catherine, aren't you one of the ones who wanted the campaign to be a little bit like tighter and you know? We, Not for we, this. We wanted... We wanted to close it off like so you know. Uh, I'm sorry. This is a whole campaign, Michael. <laughs> yeah, Jess has just had a mind blowing idea. Okay. okay, I just I'm just gonna change my notes. <laughs> Could give us all different dream characters per episode to go along with her. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> when we're in the dream, can we become different races? <laughs> what? We Why could be like that? we could be Juniper's perspective of us. Oh my, oh god. my god, that would be amazing. <laughs> No, 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 but it's not her dream. But we all have different voices. Dream. I have Simon's voice. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to go like this, and it's then Simon pretty, can just speak. It's a pretty oh, good God, spell. I can shape the dream environment if I want. Uh, <laughs> yeah, what do we want out of this? Are we literally oh, just well, going to no, say, we hi, we're here? Try and give him a little bit of a nightmare. 
to force his perspective of doing what we want him to do. Yeah, are you are you completely in control of the dream, or is it like Inception where you can like, where the dream? Because it would be really useful to use on the lady to find out where the meeting is if she didn't oh. know that it was a okay, spell. I mean, here's here, let me copy and paste the spell description. It's a long one, guys. Oh. <laughs> we can read out bits as we need to oh, for well, audio Dave purposes. Lydia. Okay. Oh wow. I mean, it is literally Inception. Wow. <laughs> Essentially, yeah. What race is Vigo? He no. is a halfling. Oh, he's, he's susceptible. Yeah, so you're in complete control of the dream. Yeah, pretty much. Hold on, let me copy. So we can't necessarily gain information from... I mean, I can chat to him. He might be happy to chat with him. Yeah, yeah, I was more thinking, could we use this as well for the lady or not? But I don't oh, wow. think we can. That wasn't all of it. Oh, it's not like Inception cool, though. It's just like email. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. I mean, I say we go for it. But at the same time, don't we need to find... A sleeping Vigo. It says that if it's while they're awake, then yeah, is it a touch or is it uh, what's the range? They have to be asleep, so probably wait until the night time. But you don't have to be with them. No. No, it's similar to sending. It's the thing of if you are aware of them mm. and they're on the same plane of existence, you can zero in. Well, if we know that Vigo is here, that probably makes the most sense. Do we think Vigo will have come alone? Well, Brenna be here, do you think? I mean, they're not particularly stealthy, but maybe. With my prior knowledge of Manchun and his dealings, would I possibly know of any other associates of Vigo's or other people that Vigo may have worked with? Ooh, roll a history check. First dice roll of 2021. Ooh, 16. You have encountered a few associates of the Genterim along your seafaring ways. You have contested bounty with them at various mm -hmm. points and wrestled cargo. They could be associated with Vigo, but given that you've never met him on the sea, mm. you know, it's a debatable one. Yeah, it's... Um, well, shall we at least go up into the upper city to see what it's like up there? And... Yeah, maybe try and see if we can find a less shady information person or... Have we found somewhere to stay yet? Yes, you are staying in the lowest tier in a almost wayfarer's stop kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with the tall Crystal. elven person. Yeah, and the crystals for light. Yeah, and no, for heaters and the... Heaters. When I said it, when I said it, I immediately went, I need to clarify that because I said it too quickly. For crystals, for heaters. Well, I did say that the benches were quite like Wagamama's. Wow. So oh, yeah. it's, it's Japanese Mexican fusion food. <laughs> remember the indeterminate chunks of sweet potato like broth I that you had? That. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, you're staying there. I don't remember the fajitas. <laughs> <laughs> just seeing alcoves floating. <laughs> I felt like it was instead of lights. Fajita. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love you all. That's right. Funny. Maybe in this universe, that's where the phrase wrap up warm came from. <laughs> fajita. Yeah, it was invented by Jorge Fajita. <laughs> or Fajita Baron. That's better. That is a lot better. Yeah, let's go with that. Fajita, fajita. Okay, stop. So yes, you do have a place to stay in answer to your original yeah. question from five minutes ago. Fajita in. So yeah, I think maybe uh, try to find Vigo or the lady through conventional means. And if that doesn't work, we'll use the uh, invasion of their psychic space as a plan B. Invasion is a strong word. Every dream is an invasion. <laughs> yeah, but it's not usually by somebody else. Or is it? <laughs> don't. Don't start that. There's no need for that. Mm. Okay, so let's get through this um, gate Onwards. first. Where, where's... Um... Oh, we're missing someone. <laughs> where's, the, where's the good looking one? Oh, I'm right here. Yeah, because I'd say that about my own sister. You never know. Can we see Saluk at all? Roll a perception check. He's just been standing right next to us the whole time. <laughs> I'm just looking at you on the roof. He's looking down like... <laughs> <laughs> 11. You 
can't see him at the moment, but you know in which direction he went. Cool. Which is up? <laughs> no, he he did land on a roof. Oh, okay. I cool. Do that. I don't go. He I'll went that it. way. <laughs> He's not yet Batman. And I, I look in the general direction of where he landed, and I go, "Kaka!" You hear a very strange bird call, Saluk. <laughs> I don't know how to respond to that. <laughs> does it... Roll an insight check. Okay, I was going to say, by pure chance, does it mean anything? <laughs> Roll an insight check. Oh, I missed the box. That was in. Oh, ooh, 16. It's a garbled avian for fajita. <laughs> <laughs> so Luke wonders what a fajita is. <laughs> <laughs> but I think would recognise the voice. Yeah. This makes very little difference. Have I already hopped down from the roof? I can't remember. I think you stopped on the roof, but yeah. I'm happy for you to have hopped down I during mean, the, the long my... conversation that just happened, yeah. if you would want I, to. Having already realised that getting into the upper city is a complete impossibility. There's no way in. No way at all. It's impossible. So Luke huffs back. He's had his time to breathe. He comes back to the group, not really saying anything, kind of looking a bit... How do you frown when you have a beak? It always frowns. Oh, you can tell when a bird's frowning. Can you? <laughs> that, you I think that's no, just you to, with your weird bird speaking powers. <laughs> to be fair, bird. most bird of prey beaks do look quite frowny. Mm. It's like it's finding pictures. You'd yeah. have to have very expressive eyebrows. Not many birds have eyebrows, though. Oh, I assume that Simon's character has eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> are they, they, like, they look ridiculous and out of place. Are they like animation eyebrows? They're yeah, not his connected to us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> do oh, we God. notice that he has returned? Yes, you would do. <laughs> and he looks very surly. The eyebrows. Ah, you've returned. Come on, they're going into the upper city, and I just walk towards the gate. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, oh, never mind. And I okay. Get in line. Elsie, do you walk past the line? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Elsie just doesn't get into the line and walks past. The guard nods. Do you require directions at all? Oh, yeah. Um, guys, do we want any directions anywhere? I think that would be useful. Do we know what kind of a tavern Vigo would frequent? Is he an upmarket kind of guy? I would not say so, no. no I'm not going to make you roll for that, no. Okay. Ask if there are any... Taverns where criminals hang out. What? Errolor, I think the lady can hear you. <laughs> As in, sorry, this lady, not I did that lady. thing where you like whisper on one word. <laughs> Ask about the criminal taverns. <laughs> oh, what when people are like, oh, Anthony. <laughs> <Anthony. laughs> <laughs> did you know she... <laughs> <laughs> I think, I, I think I think some of them might be communists. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do that. Okay. <laughs> the guard doesn't seem to hear. Looks like As they're confused. Any of it or just um, the, the, um, yeah, looks like they're confused. Um, we run a tavern down in the lower world, and we would like to frequent a variety of different establishments from the upper market down to the more seedier locations oh. to really get an idea and a feel for the different types of drinking establishments. Have you got any recommendations? Oh, well, um, there aren't really many seedy places aboard the city. Uh, we pride ourselves on being a civil and uh, upstanding populous with uh, reasonable the priced and uh, reputable places to eat and stay. Um, most places are of high reputation and um, I, I don't really know where to send you if you're looking for that kind of thing. If you're just looking for uh, eateries or breweries or similar then I can send you to a few of those um, but they're dotted about. Uh, there are fewer in the upper city. That's more where the um, mages tend to live and work. Uh, so, but there are some. Um, you you might want to uh, check out the vomitorium. Um, that one's quite popular with the mages. Uh, I don't suppose you've got a disposable or reusable map that you could give us. No, we tend not to give out 
maps. You, you, you might be able to buy one somewhere, but we don't uh, have maps for tourists, uh, yeah. given that we didn't really have tourists when we were last around. Tourists is like a modern concept. <laughs> yeah, and <laughs> Errolor and Flint in particular, it is occurring to you now that there are some words that seem to buzz a little bit as they come across, and then you realise... How are the Eilanaries speaking common? So we think maybe there's like a magical translation happening. Maybe. Mm. Right. Okay. Well, is there any identifiable features of these places you've recommended? Uh, well, you can usually tell them by the individual sitting outside drinking um, and uh, quaffing large amounts of food. The mages do rather enjoy their revelry after all, so they should be easily identifiable. Uh, there's a few of them down the street, uh, two buildings take the first right and then the second left. You should find a couple next to each other down there. Hmm. Thank you very much for your help. It's been very much helpful. I shall be on my way now. Good day. Good day to you and welcome aboard. Thank you. I thought on a cruise. <laughs> What time is the captain's dinner? And yeah, I look at the others and go, shall we? Let's. Okay. So you head through and you immediately find that this part of the city is quite a lot more spacious than the other portions. As you saw from the lower portion, there are a lot of alabaster towers that pierce the sky here. Most of them are fairly set apart. You get the sense that these are the mage towers and that they like their personal space particularly as they are probably quite jealous of their own inventions and magics. There aren't so many small squat residential buildings in this portion of the city. And you notice as well that there is far less in the way of both people and detritus, even though there wasn't a lot of rubbish in the lower city anyway. But this is spotless to an almost alarming degree. It's a little bit Stepford in its vibe, whilst not being that way in its appearance. How noisy is it? As you head through the gate, the buzz of the lower portions of the city immediately cuts off, and there is just a relative silence, the occasional trill of birdsong, but to your ear, Saluk, it's not random enough to be real. You get the sense that this is a strange feature of this part of the city, that it almost plays piped in bird song. Mm. Is there any greenery around? Make a perception check. I will. I will perceive with a natural 20. Not in your immediate area, but you catch a whiff on the wind of freshly mown grass to your immediate left, so leading away from where the guard directed. Happy to go along with it. I've always imagined that Luke's smell wouldn't be too good. Well, but because you rolled a natural 20. Fair enough. You know, yeah. does that smell legit? <laughs> With that check, I would say there's a slight oddity to the smell, almost as if it's a different type of grass to the ones that you're used to. And having lived where you lived, you knew of quite a few different grasses, but this one you're not familiar with. Obviously, I don't know if Flint will have picked up on the all too regular bird song, but in terms well, of any other perception check, see if you do. Well, is there anything, I guess, any defensive magics that Flint sees up or anything like okay. that? Uh, basically, any particularly noteworthy magical elements. Okay, I will say roll a perception check and an arcana check. Okay, perception is a 10 and arcana... Oh my gosh, 11. Okay, not immediately in view, you also think that it is likely that were there any defensive magics they would probably not be on display it is a bit weird that the sound cuts off to the degree that it does that may be semi-defensive in nature but you're not sure and it is slightly disorientating having come from such a busy area into a much quieter one that has this strange atmosphere to it okay i'll keep my eye out for anything odd as okay. we walk did the sky look all right? Because when I was looking at the wall from outside, I can't remember. Did I see something? I, I don't might be completely think so. You might have been thinking of when you were below and you saw the blue haze around the bottom oh, of the city. 
Yeah. Does it, okay, does yeah. it look the same as the rest of the city? Yeah, pretty much. The sky looks the same. Cool. So, where are you going? I have a strange feeling about this place. I think I prefer the top side there with the guards. Just the one strange feeling. I deal with them one at a time. You Makes hear sense. That? Points out the bird song. Oh, pretty. It is not natural. We're in a flying city. Yeah, it is better for the tourists. I mean, it is. Uh, it is made up. Do you see any birds? Not me. No. So you think they don't have birds for some reason, rather than just thinking it'd be nice to have birds on? I, I do not know. I just think it is strange that a place this wealthy would not have more niche. The birds sound fake, and the you can smell the air. The air smells unlike anything that we have below. Well, it's a floating city. Maybe they have to create their own atmosphere, which means having no birds, which means throwing fake birds flying. I do not know. It might also be a rich person thing. <laughs> In my experience, it's not a rich person thing. No, I mean, I mean, like <laughs> the the controlling your own environment thing okay. that rich people like to do. How do they? Why would you get rid of the beauty of nature when you can afford to buy it? <laughs> it seems odd to me. Would you not want to have more of it in? And depends, I suppose. Don't know what's inside their towers. They might have like weird magical terrariums or something. So uh, we look. At, are we going to go where the guard told us to go, or are we just going to mill about in the way of everybody? I think we should go. Mm. Okay. So you follow the directions, and you find yourselves coming to a building not massively dissimilar from the inn at which you're staying. It's another long not terribly squat building but not terribly tall either and you can see that there are a number of robed individuals milling about outside with various fairly ornate glassware in their hands with a variety of colored liquids within them as you come towards it you notice that some of them seem to be playing with the liquid in the sense of they are doing intricate hand movements and some of the liquid is moving just as somebody is about to drink it leaps out of their glass and into somebody else's and it looks relatively good humored as opposed to it being a malicious prank and eventually the liquids do go back into their respective glasses and things it is one of those ones of going yeah this is funny but also not sanitary (laughs) man i wish i could do that the liquid, I'm assuming it's not sentient or anything. <laughs> <laughs> Blood. Um, oh, um, my God, it's a you... anger. Roll a nature check, I suppose? Natural one. <laughs> I'm very be. disturbed by these events. It could be sentient. You don't know? I just um, wow. keep truffle close to me. That would be a great adventure, a pub where all the food and drink was actually part of the same creature and it was trying to just sort of spread like Invasion of the Body Snatchers type scenario. Yeah, it'd be called The Sustenance. You're describing Um, Sausage Party. (laughs) Oh no. No one should ever describe Sausage Party. (laughs) But when the people eat the items in Sausage Party, the items die, Mm. rather than taking over them. Yeah. Spreading the sausage. You see, I know my Sausage Party <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't don't come for me. <laughs> Let me check the sausage party wiki. <laughs> this is not a movie podcast. <laughs> of the people that we can see reveling, mm-hmm. do they all seem to be natives? Roll a perception check. <laughs> Natural one. Oh, no. You can't see anybody who doesn't look like they fit in <laughs> outside. You haven't been accosted. They're not looking at you in a particular way that says that you're not allowed, but there's certainly nobody outside that catches you as being out of place. Mm-hmm. Juniper, you like pubs? We all like pubs. We own one. Oh, surely pubs are a great place for you to perform and gather information. <laughs> they can be. She's not getting it. <laughs> <laughs> I do not know if... This would make things any better, but I, I feel like a start would be for me to buy you all a drink. This way of an apology, I suppose. I mean, as far as plans go, I like that one. Uh, although, bear with me a moment. Are there any officials nearby? Any law keepers that I can see? Roll a perception check. 14. There are a couple of guards milling around the place. It looks like they're on patrol, but they seem to be a little bit more relaxed than the okay. ones lower down. 
I'll walk up to one of the more relaxed ones and okay. just go, um, hi, sorry, don't mean to bother. Um, I've got my, uh, my wee little mechanical device here. I'm sort of a accomplice and uh, associate of mine. Um, I, I wonder if it's not too much trouble. I might allow him to fly around a little bit. I promise I keep him on a very tight leash. I see no problem with this. Thank you very much. Just I'll, uh, do not allow him to fly into any of the windows. No, of course. Uh, he's a he's an outdoor bird, so uh, thank you very much. Uh, obviously, give me a shout if uh, he uh, gets too much or too out of order. <laughs> I, uh, like I say, I, uh, I keep him close, but uh, he's got a mind of his own. So We have no problem with people looking at our fair city. We have nothing to hide. Well, that is it's... the most suspicious sounding thing. <laughs> I don't actually say that. Yeah. It's very good that you felt the need to tell me that. So uh, <laughs> thank you very much. Um, I'll, uh, I I'll do not him... know what you mean, but I hope your bird has a good day. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so nice. with that, Luke being very careful with the guards right now. <laughs> I'm gonna turn back to the group and just say, right, I'm going to. Uh, get Truffle to fly around if he sees any sign of Vigo. He'll come back to me, right? <laughs> Good. Okay. Up you go. Okay. Roll a perception check for Truffle then, please. Oh. I just say, I love Truffle with sparks. <laughs> <laughs> That's who he's... Yeah, I, I didn't realise it until now, but that is who he's based on, isn't it? Natural Twantabara. Okay. So Truffle zips straight up and you just see the wink of the sun dazzle off his metallic frame, and then he seems to twitch his beak in a few directions, and then rockets off in a particular direction. Aye. Looks like it's northward. It's quite difficult to tell, surrounded by towers, which direction is which at the moment. And also, the city does tend to move a little bit, so the compass points aren't incredibly clear, but northward-ish. Does that mean we follow him? He'll... Uh... He'll come back oh, yes. and lead us if needs be. Yeah, and so, also we were getting a drink. I was going to say, yeah, so Saluk, I hear that there was a, a drink being bought. Well, yes. Shall we go in? If we can sit away from the guards, though. Okay, sure thing. Okay. okay, so you go in and you find the place is pretty packed of people in the familiar robe cut of the mage class of Eilinar. They are a boisterous lot. There are men, women, people of indeterminate gender, various races, some of which you are not familiar with. And it's some are slightly mammalian, some are reptilian, but they're not necessarily lizard people or dragonborn. It is unclear. It may be progenitors of those races. You're not really sure. But you go in and there's a few tables round and about. It has a distinct smell of rose petals and lilac. It's a really flowery mix, which is strange considering that a lot of the people seem to be very drunk and burping quite openly. It should reek, but it really doesn't. You go over towards a table, you notice that there are a few waiting staff milling about and taking orders. So you assume that if you just pick a table, they will come over to you. And eventually one does. It's a young girl, maybe mid-teens, has a series of intricate plaits that run about halfway down her back. And she comes up to go, all right, uh, what do you want then? I would like to get some, some beers for my friends. The, uh, what is the, uh, the brew of the city? Uh, well, we've uh, got the Magic Might. That's probably the one that's most well known. Uh, it's got a little bit of a tingle. Uh, you know, makes people sort of hover a little bit. I'm not sure if I want to hover today. <laughs> it's, it's just an expression, love. Well, I think we're far enough off the ground, but if that's what goes around here, I'm, I'm happy to try some. <clears throat> a, a round of those and a round of something more grounded to go with it. All right, okay, yeah, we can do that. Uh, so six of each of those. Sounds good. Yeah. All right, uh, that'll bring you 12 silver. So Luke, once again, goes in his coin purse and separates out the coins he doesn't care about and hands them over. He tries to remember how to deduct coins on the and Beyond. So yes, you pay 12 silver, which is the gold and two silver, I did it. essentially. <laughs> okay, cool. So you are at a table, your drinks are brought. You have the magic might 
and there is a smaller shot that is of a fairly clear liquid with little goldish flakes in it. Ooh. I'd like to look around the room to see if Ego is here. Okay. Roll Just on the off chance. Roll an investigation check. Oh, okay. not, in not initiative. Mm, plus zero, eight. <laughs> there don't appear to be many, if any, people not from Eilina other than yourselves in this place. Great. One drink here, on to the next one. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing a fantasy oh. tavern. Oh, yes. <laughs> so Luke is fascinated with the gold chips in the drink. And rather than drinking it, just picks up the glass and stares fascinated into it. Yeah, it's almost like a golden snow globe to you. It's just endlessly swirling around. And you notice that when you hold the glass very still, the flakes still swirl fairly regularly. So you drink up. What are you doing now? Going to the next one. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so, sorry, Elsie. Where is Truffle? Truffle zoomed off. But Flint, you could see where he is, right? Got your brace, haven't you? Oh, yeah, sorry, I was... (laughs) inebriated already uh yeah let me take a look at my little doohickey my sending stone not okay. sending stone my scrying stone that's the one roll a perception check for your scrying stone Ooh, 18 it's briefly very vertiginous particularly after having a couple of drinks there is a slight whoa feeling as you zoom in because truffle is moving very fast in a particular direction and then you just see him glance down at what looks like a person who looks like they should be in place, looks like they should fit in, but then there's just a very brief shimmer to their appearance that suggests that some of them might be an illusion. Okay, whereabouts is this in relation to where we are? It's hard to tell from the geography, but given the time taken, it can't be that far. So northerly direction, not too far away, and Truffle did travel very fast. So middling distance? You could probably track him down. Okay. I will quickly describe the area to everyone and say, so I guess if we move off as soon as, then we might be able to catch up. Onwards. Okay. No more pub crawl. What the, how was how would it drink? What did they taste like? Obviously substandard compared to ours. I mean nobody really commented on them, so I think Salute's a bit downtrodden that his apologetic yeah. drinks were just so underwhelmed. We all just sat in silence. Everybody's well, you've not really said that they were apology drinks. You just said you were buying us drinks. So we drank our say. drinks I and we left. One hundred percent grovel and said <laughs> it start of an apology. Yeah. <laughs> the magic might is strange in that it feels quite fizzy and for a beer that's weird but it leaves you feeling quite warm and a little bit tingly in your stomach it's not an unpleasant feeling it's quite oaky as well those of you that try the golden flaked liquid that one is very tingly on the tongue as it goes down almost like popping candy and then once it mixes in your stomach there's just a very benevolent almost gold feeling in your stomach. If that could be a feeling, it's very odd. And it's not a sensation that you've ever had before in your lives. Definitely a really good old fashioned. (laughs) I wouldn't know. I drank both of mine, just to clarify. Yeah. So do you go off in search of truffle? Yeah. I'll say with the perception checks, Flint, that you pretty much know in which direction he went. So it takes a little while, and then eventually you are met by Truffle as he comes on the way back, and his beak twitches to the left a little bit, and then almost like a compass, his point of his beak leads you in particular directions as you're going down streets and things. It's a little bit further than you thought, You realise that Truffle took your instructions to heart and went very, very quickly. But eventually you come to a building that is a little bit more secluded than some of the others. There is a pair of trees that vine and twine together over the door and then almost twist like a double helix up towards the sky. The building is quite tall and looks like it might be airy were there any windows that were visible to you but as you look around you can't see any on the three sides that you can see there might be one at the back but there's also no people around 
and you don't necessarily want to go and look like you're scoping out the building in case somebody inside could see, but you're not sure whether they can because there are no windows. And Truffle just <laughs> points at the door. I think we found a place. Who wants to lead the way? Well, you found it. Aye, but just in case stealth is required, we might need someone a little more quiet. I'm so glad that's not me. (laughs) While he's saying that, Elsie just starts to stretch. (laughs) I'm going to like move and and then stand behind Elsie. (laughs) And limber up. Move backwards. Well, thank you for volunteering yourself. You notice, Elsie, that most of the group have actually taken a step behind you. Like that thing when you're all in a line and exactly. someone says, volunteers, and everyone but one person steps back. Exactly. I'm not that big. I'm not going to hide all of you. No, but if you could go in, scope things out a little bit, let us know that it's okay for us to join. Cool. Yeah. Hopefully. Sure. Okay. Um, before opening the door, I listen at the door. There is no door. It is an open archway onto darkness. Yes, I was listening. Cool. I may not have specified that. I apologise if I didn't. Yeah, I also quite possibly wasn't listening. (laughs) But yeah, before going through the archway, I stop and try and see if I can hear anything from the other side. Okay, roll a perception check. I don't hear anything. Do you not? It's perception. Oh, it's a natural one. Yeah, because reliable talent doesn't negate natural ones, unfortunately. I don't think, does it? Uh, Oh, was anything below a turn? Yeah, even if it's a natural one. Because you can't crit fail. Oh, see, on a skill. I just thought natural one was just. Well, yeah, but you can't really crit fail on a skill check, so I don't. Mm. It, you know, regardless, you can't hear anything. Okay, cool. I take a step through the archway. Okay, the rest of you watch as Elsie steps through the archway, and you can still see her for a few moments before the shadows envelope her and she disappears. Elsie, it is pitch black in here. Okay. It takes a little while for your eyes to start to adjust Mm -hmm. and you get the sense that there are vague shapes around you. They look like they might be desks or tables. You can't really see any people and it is very, very dark to the extent that Is it darker than my dark vision? Your dark vision is very limited. Uh Uh-huh, okay. In the sense that even more limited than usual. Mm -hmm. So with that in mind... I get out my fire starter mm-hmm. and okay as you light it the area around you immediately for about five meters is lit the rest is still black this suggests that this darkness is magical in some way hello hello can you turn the lights on <laughs> it hurts my eyes oh okay um where are you High above you. Mm. <laughs> I look above. You don't see anything. What are you doing here in the dark? Oh, you know, hanging out. Cool. What are you doing here in the dark? I always find dark spaces interesting, so I thought I'd come and see what was going on. While talking to this voice, I start walking around the room trying to get my bearings and get the orientation of the room. It's a bit confusing. You almost bump into a few of the bits of furniture. They don't seem to be terribly cohesive. They seem Mm. like they've just been strewn about almost by somebody who can't see. Mm. It just seems to be bits and pieces everywhere and it seems to be bric-a-brac. And you notice at one point you come face to face with a bust of a rather crusty looking old man who has a very large nose and very large ears and looks very upset at being made into a statue. Uh, Excuse me. You walk around. It's just, it's a strange place. Mm -hmm. And then eventually the voice comes again and goes, you seek interest? Quite possibly. What are you? Interesting. Well, my friend Sam, but I wouldn't. I, I, yeah. I, I'd say I'm interesting. Mm. I don't know. Am I interesting to you? Yes. From below, no. Yes, from below. Mm. What do you do down there? 
Can you not smell it on me? Salt. Mm. Wine. Mm-hmm. Much wine. <laughs> All the wine. Um. Mm. Coin. Yes, not as much as I'd like, but coin. You are interesting. Thank you. I hope you are too, but I can't really give any judgment on that at the moment. No. The rest of you. Elsie's been gone a little while. Can we hear anything? Roll a perception check. No. <laughs> Five. I, I mean, um, I would also be listening. Am I allowed to roll as well? Yeah, if you want to roll individually, that's fine. Oh. <laughs> oh, it's a listen check. Yes. So, 11. Nope. Just the strange bird song. Um, Do you think we should go in? Well, if Elsie isn't coming back, then... The options are that she has died. In which case, do we want to go in? Nah. Option two is she's been abducted. In which case, do we want to go in? Option three, she's just taking a really long time. That's all I've got. She is too stubborn to call for help if she is in trouble. That's true. We're probably all going to go in anyway. I get the sense you're kind of like that, yeah? It's unlikely we would just wait here. Yeah. We were just testing to see if, you know, the entrance was trapped or anything. So she didn't die immediately. So I think we can take the risk. <laughs> Great. Thanks. Wait, you God. used my sister as a, a sacrificial lamb? I think she volunteered herself. Yeah, Very enthusiastic. That's true. That, that's true, actually. <laughs> we, when we did all take the step back, she was stepping in front of it. Yeah, yeah, you're right. If you think I'm interesting, I might have some more people that you find even more interesting. Mm, even one of more them. interesting people. One We've of them. We've already met two today. Two? Who was the other person you found interesting? Mm, still here. Is it you? <laughs> no. So the other interesting person is still here. Yes. We were just talking to him. Hello, other interesting person. No, oh, he can't hear you. Because he's dead? No! Interesting friends, would you like to join me? They can't hear you. Because no one hears you scream in space? You're not in space. Okay. Why can't they hear me then? We like to make sure that we are not under threat. And who it's... are... Who are we? <laughs> who are we? <laughs> <laughs> We are old. Okay. This might seem a daft question, but have I heard this type of voice before? Roll a history check. 17. Nope. Okay. Seeing as we've not heard from Elsie in a while, I'm going to just turn to the others and go, <clears throat> I think we should maybe follow. Yeah, I figured we'd end up doing that. Okie dokie. It is the least I can do to go in first. After all, Elsie did try and help me out in my uh, predicament. I'll go in last. (laughs) (laughs) Because I owe Elsie nothing. (laughs) You are are going to be behind me, right? Because the the tunnel looks quite cramped. Yes. Do you not want me to? No, no. I I would like you to. To stop me from running away? No. Because you are my friends. And if I am going into a place that I find stressful, I would like my friends to be there. Oh, that's nice. Yes, I will bravely go behind you. <laughs> Especially after my apology drink, which makes a square. Okay, we're going in now. And so we I will. slide towards the door. I will I take away. my gun out as well. Okay. So, Juniper, are you going as well? Cool. So, you start to go in. So, Luke, as soon as you walk in, the rest of you lose sight of him, and you lose sight of them. As each person seems to go... Darkness descends, and you can't hear footsteps or breathing. Can I instinctively reach forward and grab Saluk's wing? Well, no, he has arms. We established he has arms. You reach <laughs> forward and grip nothing. I'm so slippery for you. <laughs> <laughs> this is the interesting person you were speaking to. Can you tell me what you talked about? Mm, privileged information. Any way that I can make that unprivileged information? <laughs> Wait, 
We do not betray. Well, what happens if I give you some interesting information and we do a trade? He paid a lot. Would have to be very interesting. Well, you've already determined that I'm an interesting person, so interesting people have interesting facts. True. What kind of interesting things do you like to hear about? Everything. Flint, as you're walking forward, clutching your gun close, Put away your weapon. We mean you no harm. They seem to be telling the truth. <laughs> roll an insight check. I'm gonna roll my good dice. <laughs> it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> that will be a seven. It's hard to tell. It's a very strange voice. You are feeling a little bit threatened and alone in an unfamiliar space. Okay. I will put it on my back again, but I will keep my hand on the handle thank you did i hear that no ow she wasn't wrong you are interesting who this is to me yeah (laughs) okay uh who uh who told you um uh, it was interesting the salty lady ah yes i do know who you mean um are you her friend uh, for the purposes of this question, yes. Mm, an I, interesting uh, answer. We sense tension. Well, are you in the habit of answering questions or just asking them? Depends on the question. Do you still have my friend? She is here, as are the others, and the first one. This first one? Yes. Halfling, perchance? Mm. Pretended not to be, but yes. Right. You seek him? Uh, aye, we do. Um, what? Do you, do you live here? Yes. Do we live here now? No. Okay, that's good. We are not in habit of keeping guests. What, uh, what might persuade you to let us be on our way? You can leave. Okay, can, you can are we? Not imprisoned. Well, can we leave with our first friend? He is your friend also. Uh, we've travelled a little bit with him, eh? He did not know you were here. Well, no, we uh, we're hoping to catch up with him. Mm. Do you wish me to tell him? Uh, no. 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 No one needs to roll in such checks on there. Uh, <laughs> <Twin. laughs> 20 gold pieces. What passed through? No, not to tell him. Right, so this is what passing is for mugging in a floating city then? No, his information is interesting. Okay. It's valuable. Okay. I'll, uh, I'll hand you over that gold. I'll just drop it on the floor here. Thank you. You drop it and you hear the tinkle, but it's not as many tinkles as it should be. And then... You pat the floor and there's nothing there. Okay. Uh, so when when can we uh when can we go? You may leave now. Simply go back the way you came. Right. Do you think our first friend is going to do that as well? I don't know. I've been talking to you. Well, I could uh, ask him. Oh uh, yeah, if you could, that would be useful. Mm. And then no sound for a little while. Mm, a feathered one. Elsie, Elsie, is that you? No. Is, is Elsie there? Yes, but she cannot hear you. Can, can you hear me? Yes. Can you fly? Yes. Ah, we can fly. If you are not Elsie, then who are you? We are old. No, I am not. Uh-huh. Hmm, no, that would be very strange. Uh, how old are you? Mm, we are uh, old. My friend Elsie is, I think, older than me. Perhaps you have seen her. For, she might look like you. I do not know. Mm, no. She came in here not too many minutes ago. Yes, but we do not see well. We hear well. I do not see anything at the moment. I, I do not like it. Mm. Have you gone? No, we are listening. I do not know if I am meant to say something in particular. Are you interested? Nobody has ever asked me that before. Mm. People tend to look at me. At least since I started going around with my friends. I think when 
strangers look at you, that means that they find you interesting. Hmm. It is a shame that you cannot look at me in the dark. It, you might find me interesting too. Hmm. Our eyes, our eyes are not good. We hear well. We know you are feathered from our ears. That is impressive if you can hear the rustle of my feathers. Hmm. I do not hear anything except your voice, I think. No. Do you have feathers? No. What do you have? Wings, fur. You sound interesting to me. Mm. I, I would like, I would like to see. Roll the persuasion check. Fifteen. There's a brief flutter of movement. It's not one that you're terribly familiar with. There's almost a leathery quality to it, and then you feel something land not too far away from you, and then there's a strange. Not quite light, but energy that floats into existence. It's almost like ultraviolet light and very low purple. And you see a stunt-nosed, wrinkled face with tiny eyes, humongous triangular ears that twitch and flick in various directions. And wrapped around the slightly pale-furred body are white skin wings and you see clawed feet tapping nervously on the ground. This individual looks like a gigantic version of the bats from your homeland and then the light dissipates and the flutter happens again as it flies away. You saw. I did. I have never seen anything like you that is quite as big as you. We are old. There are creatures like you near where I come from. They are similar in shape and in appearance, but nowhere near as grand as you. Mm. Why do you hide away in here? The light hurts, but we find this place so interesting. Other than the dark, I suppose it is peaceful. I do not usually like spaces that are small like this. It is not small. I cannot tell. It is too dark. <sighs> Every space is small when it is dark and you cannot see further than in front of your nose. Or your beak, I suppose, in my case. True. You can't Hold. stay in here all the time. Do you Hold on. Not... We need to speak to the small third one. Hello, little doggy. Hello. I think your doorway is magical. You are correct. You are very interesting. Oh, thank you. Um, my name's Juniper. What's yours? Old. Hello, old. Um, how, how do you spell that? O-L-D. That's good. My name is spelled J-U-N-I-P-E-R. Mm. We have not seen your like before. I, I don't think there's many junipers. I'm the only no. one I know. Do you miss your friends? I mean, it's been about five minutes. When it gets to seven minutes, then I'll miss them. I, are they okay? They are. Are you talking to them as well? Not right now. We were. Oh, is this where you live? Yes. I can't see it very well, but I'm sure it's very nice. Thank you. Do you have information? What sort of information? Anything interesting. Uh, my name is Juniper. I'm travelling with my friends. Have you spoken to Evelor yet. She's very interesting. No. She's, she's the tall one. She's very tall and she comes from a land of ice and monsters oh. and and she's manages a pub very well. She, we've got lots of little signs and they tell everybody what they can't do and if they is don't it, follow the signs then we kick them out. Is it an ice pub? It isn't currently a nice pub. But it's a nice pub though. It's a nice <laughs> It's a nice <laughs> mm, We shall talk to her. Okay. You, Eredor. <laughs> I've just been standing in this pitch black darkness for the last 15 minutes. Yep. You own an ice pub. Did there you are say monsters. ice pub or nice pub? We are not sure. I own a nice pub. There are monsters there? Um, depends how you define monsters, but no. Mm. Where are the monsters then? Juniper said there were monsters. 
Did she say there were monsters at the ice pub? That must have been it. She's probably talking about the high high ice, is that where it was? Yes. That's a good name for a pub. The high oh, we could have called it the high ice. <sighs> we could have a second, we can make it into a franchise. Yeah, but you can only serve daiquiris. <laughs> you are interesting. She said you were. Oh, thank you. Time hangs heavy on you. Mm-hmm. A destiny. Mm-hmm. And who are you? We are old. And who are you? <laughs> we are unsure of how to answer further. We are old. We always have been old. Oh. You seek the halfling? Yeah. Flint has paid us not to tell him you're here. Mm-hmm. Why, if you seek him? I suppose he's worried that if he finds out we're here, then he might try and run away from us. But he is your friend, Flint said so. But he's also working. Mm. You are very interesting. And on that last very interesting, you all hear the same words. And there's a brief moment where the darkness seems to shimmer. And then you can hear the breathing of a few other individuals, but you can't see them. You are together now, apart from the halfling. Hello. Can he get out if he wants to? He can, but he needs information. From you? Yes. And you're going to give it to him? If he provides enough trade, coin, or information. Is there just one exit? Yes. So we can just wait outside until he has his information? If you choose. I think I will. Very well. It was very interesting to meet you. Yes. Before I go, what is your name? We are old. Your name is old? Oh, yes. your name is old. Yes. Was was that not... Oh. No, I, I do not know if it is the same for you, but when people say old, they mean they have been around for a long time. We are both. My name does not mean that. It does not mean I have only been around for the years I have. Oh. I find that funny. So please, if... Uh, if you don't mind coming out into the city when it when it gets dark, perhaps you could uh, show us some interesting places, places where we might find some information. We need to hunt. In the city? Yes. What do you hunt? Mm, fruit. <laughs> if you can give us information, I'm, I'm sure we can give you some fruit. What information? Elsie, are you here? Yes. Tell old what information. What information do we want? <laughs> if we can get, yeah, we're all in the same conversation now, right? Yeah. No. Apart from Maud. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. If we can guess what information the halfling has come for, can we have the answer for free? Mm. For food, we have promised him food. We must not steal from people. Depends whether the halfling pays us to keep it quiet. Okay. Well, do you want to want to find out first? We shall ask. Things go very quiet. This is literally my worst nightmare. Like being in a black void, conscious, but with nothing around me. Oh, no. Is everybody still there? Yes. I'm gonna go right up to his ear and just go, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I spin around and the <laughs> <laughs> You made him jump. The halfling says he wants others to have access to the information. He says he has been told there are others that may need it. Maybe that's us? Perhaps. So does that mean his payment covers us as well? No. Mm. But you mentioned fruit. Where is the fruit? We would have to get it first, but we can bring it to you. You promise fruit you do not have? I promise fruit that I know we can get. We promised the fruit of our labours. No, we we promised fruit like apples and bananas. (laughs) Somebody else else has laboured for them, but I do not promise the labour, I promise the banana. I would prefer the second. We have rations. Do rations have fruit in? Not generally speaking. Mm. Fruit doesn't tend to last terribly long. I always imagine rations like horrible cardboardy biscuits. (laughs) I imagine it like astronaut food in a pouch that's like... like you squeeze it from the bottom and it like comes out. No, it tends it, in D and D. It tends to be sort of jerky and that sort of thing. 
you know, salted meat. Also, if there's any kind of squeezable pouch in this era, it's going to be like a pig's bladder or something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Stuff the pig's bladder with more pig's bladder. <laughs> <laughs> but just empty a haggis. <laughs> <laughs> Liquidized haggis. Oh, no. So, fruit, or oh, you pay. I'm happy to pee again. I have a lot of stuff in my inventory, but I don't have any fruit. <laughs> do you have something that looks like fruit? I mean, I could probably do a spell, but I'm not interested in, in you know, deceiving. Does anyone have the good berry spell? No. no. The one time when it would be useful. <laughs> <laughs> to bribe a massive fruit bat. <laughs> we have some money. We accept money. We would have prefer frozen, fruit. Have you had frozen yogurt? No. Is it interesting? Uh, well, um, is it you, fruit? Can, you can try a little bit. Um, I, if my bowl is mostly empty, but you can. It's very melted by now. It's yeah. basically milk. Yeah, I yeah, just I'm carrying that around this whole time. Well, I mean, yeah, er- Erilor, can't you refreeze it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I reach out. Ray of Frost. <laughs> I just I feel that it's important that now you've committed to these actions, we can't see. <laughs> yes, fine. Ray of Frost, 3d8. <laughs> Could you roll an attack roll, please? God. <laughs> if you hit the fruit bat. Uh, with disadvantage, because you are blind. I'm going to be so mad. I would love the fact where Michael was already prepared for this and pulls up the battle cam. <laughs> The battle cam. <laughs> uh, How do I do spells? Right, here we go. <laughs> How do I spell? And I've got me wand as well, so... Me wand? 21. Okay. Flint, you have the brief moment of, oh, wait, we can't see. <laughs> before there is a very cold feeling upon your hand as you realise that Erelor has not only frozen the yoghurt within the pot, but the pot to your hand. Oh, oh, did, oh. did she make that too cold? Would you like a fireball? No, 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 Elsie, no. Uh, I have one too. No, uh, <laughs> I, uh, old. Um, you won't be able to take it off my hand, so please don't. But uh, try, try some. Uh... Roll a persuasion check. <laughs> After all of that, <laughs> how many hands does your gun take? <laughs> That is uh, 20. Okay. There's a brief moment. And then you have the very odd sensation of a quite long, thin tongue sliding around your hand and the ice upon it. And particularly in the dark, it's very unpleasant. And then there's a... Mm, I don't care for it. Oh, good. But thank you for the opportunity. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. I'll just, uh, I'll wait for this to unfreeze. <laughs> it's largely unfrozen because the heat of the tongue melted quite a portion of it. I'll just wait. Uh, look, people, I'm happy to pay if that will get us out of the dark. Or we could just wait outside until he comes out. Hey, hold on. You can pay if you want. I, I feel bad now. I have made an offer and you're now offering something else. Go ahead if that is what we want to do. Fruit or money? <laughs> we do not mind. Can, Can that be the title? <laughs> Can we go get some fruit and bring it back to you? If you wish. Let's do that. <laughs> Let's do it. Fruit hunt episode. <laughs> I think we should all go and get a different piece of fruit. <laughs> wow. Why are we so upset? <laughs> Still haven't found the berries. <laughs> Just send that video to everyone. <laughs> I found this. <laughs> what? what? It's a video which I've only ever really seen Ed do an impression of, and it's so much better than the video itself. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's usually the case when Ed does videos. Okay, well, I'm going to just leave, and I'm going to use... <laughs> My Outlander ability to just go and find some berries because I okay. can do that. I okay, can, I can get as, six portions of berries. As you go outside, you see that Maud is lent up against the door. She didn't actually come in with you, ah. it seems, or she left immediately. You're not quite sure. 
but she's just picking her fingernails with a dagger. And as you come out, she goes, all right, have fun. No, and oh. I'm going to... <laughs> yeah, it was pretty, it's pretty scary in there. I, I must admit I ran out straight away. Well, good for you. Uh, help me find some berries and I'm just going to what? get straight to it. Okay, so you have to go a little ways until you find what looks to be an orchard just in the middle of a street. It's quite strange. It's a patch of bark chips and moss and grass that is just randomly growing to the extent that the stone around it looks cracked and broken. To your eye and knowing what you do about magic, this looks like it was a magical mishap and they've just let it continue. Okay. There are rather large peaches and there appear to be apples and pears, all of them slightly larger than is natural. And they are also very different colours to the ones that you're used to. As in the pears are purple, the apples are bright orange, and they bear the shape, but not the colour with which you're familiar. Okay. I will pick some, if it is permitted. Okay. So as you start to pick them, you just hear the softest, ah, and you just shake your head and you think, ah, I've imagined it. And then when you pick the next route, you can hear a, ouch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm envisioning this is the dream, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm envisioning you've that... been in it all along. No. I'm envisioning that face swap that Simon did with a grape that one time. <laughs> I reckon two is probably enough. Okay, I'm I don't want to pick any more fruit. I'm just going to take these two. Okay, what are the rest of you doing? Repercussions for the whole rest of the campaign. Um, I'm still I, I, in the room. Yeah, I'm waiting for Flint to come back for the fruit. Okay. okay. Um, how, how much money would the information cost? It would be 50 gold. <laughs> Get out 50 gold. <laughs> ah. <laughs> and I hand over the 50 gold. But your friend has gone for fruit. We only need one. We will give you the fruit as well. It is fine. It, it's getting oh. silly at this point. <laughs> oh, generosity. And so, Luke, you in the dark, feel the very strange sensation of two leathery wings wrapping around you. (laughs) And there's just a little bit of hot, fruity breath next to your face, and then it's gone. Okay, it is is fine. Apologies. We should have asked permission. We were excited. It it is honestly fine. It, It surprised me. So, the information you seek regards a meeting Yes. How did you know? We spoke to the short one. Oh, that makes sense. Yes, it does. The lady is holding this meeting, yes? That is what we have been told. You seek Aster's Archivideal. Aster, did you say? (laughs) Aster. Aster's Archive. Aster's (laughs) Archivideal. I I heard Archive Video, and I'm just thinking it's like a blockbuster store. It's A S T O R. Yeah. This floating city is ancient indeed. <laughs> Archividium. It was Archividium Earth all along. Word. Yeah. Uh, no, the Asters is uh, yeah, possessive. Yeah. 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 But the Archividium is one word. Yeah. I'm, I'm definitely thinking it's a secondhand video store or something. Fantasy <laughs> blockbuster. Yeah. Yeah, it's just got lots of moving scrolls. <laughs> is in the boiler room behind the video rental store. <laughs> <laughs> you must be careful. It is not a safe place. Many magical items. Much power there. Where is it? The westernmost point of this layer of the city. A large building. Seems to be only one floor, but it runs much deeper almost to the core of the stone on which we float. It goes down, not up like all of the fancy towers? It goes down to the foundations. It is old, like we are, and not like we are. If it goes down through the foundation, is there any way of getting in from the underside of the city? No. You must approach from above. But there are many doors, many challenges along the way. So even if we are trying to get caught, we get caught on the ground with very little routes for escape. Many routes of escape, but 
difficult it would be. Difficult roots can turn out being the same as noise. True. Did you ever wonder how the lady knew to hold her meeting here? We have only just returned. Did she know that we would return? Did she plan for it? Did she, she help you return? Did she plan it? Or did she take advantage of it? We have integrated very quickly. We understand all of you. How? Why? Was magic. Oh, it is. But not any that we know. It is magic that one of us knew. But she doesn't know it now. She has forgotten. We think she will remember soon. Destiny is funny that way. That is your information. We look forward to the fruit. Do you wish to leave now? Or do you want other information? I suppose it depends on how much the information is. If it's all 50 gold pieces, then no thanks. It depends on what you seek. You mentioned the challenges that we would face inside. Yes. Do you know what they are? No. We have not visited in some time and they change. The building, it knows, you see. Why have you been inside? We knew Asta. He was a friend long ago. No more. I think we should leave this, this fine creature in peace. Should we not wait until she's given her fruit? Flint will find his way back here and we will not go outside of the archway. You know, you are scared, well, sensitive to the light, but you do not have to hide yourself away in here. While we are here in the city, it would be nice to speak to you further in the night time, if you can find us. We are not hidden. You found us, but we appreciate the sentiment. Well, if you are comfortable here, that is fine. I only mean to suggest that I feel I am better for getting myself out there. I would want you to have a chance at the same. We had a chance many long ago. We prefer the dark and the quiet now. We lost much. So Flint, you have come back to the door. Maud still waiting outside. Your friends have not reappeared. I just poke my head in. Is everyone still there? You hear Flint's voice. Um, yes. <laughs> Do we still need the fruit or no? We still need the fruit. All right. I'm just going to place it on the floor right here. Thank you. And you hear the voice very close to you, Flint. Uh, you're welcome. We will go back to talking to the short one now. If you choose to leave, we bid you farewell. We would like to hear you again, but we are not sure we will. Shall we ask them to tell the short one where we're staying? Yeah. Yeah. Or should we just wait outside? Well, he's going to have to leave, so I think we just hover outside. Okay. Okay. I think it would be wiser to meet in a neutral location, even if he is outside. Okay. So do you head outside? Yeah. Farewell, old. There is no response. So you walk outside. Right. So you, you, what was the fruit for? Where have you been? Oh, out here, I got scared and I ran away. You didn't go in? Uh, very briefly, but that, there was a voice in there. But it was your sister in there, and you didn't go in for your sister. I did. I just chose to leave quite quickly. That is disappointing. I, I am disappointed. And Siluk turns away and just starts fussing with his clothes and greening himself. Okay, some time passes, and then eventually an individual that you don't recognise comes out of the doorway. They are human in appearance, quite dark-skinned, and have a black cloak over their head that then fades into grey and then white as it flows down towards the floor. As they come out, they glance at you, tilt their head slightly to their shoulder, and then nod and start to walk away. So we assume that's Vigo in disguise. You don't know. What did they smell like? Roll a perception check, with advantage. Indeed. <laughs> There we go. You can't spy a smell. <laughs> I actually but you can't spy a smell. <laughs> I honestly have no idea if illusion spells or whatever. It depends. You have to be specific with the illusion. The yeah, that's what I was wondering. Would it necessarily cover a scent? No, because uh, it's a... stuff like minor illusion and prestidigitation. They can do smells or images. Mm. It's only the higher so It's like ones. major illusion or something. Yeah. yeah. Major image, even. Yeah. Would it just cover up the smell or would it eliminate 99% of <laughs> no, that's major detail. Ah. <laughs> yeah, um, I rolled a twenty, but it was not natural. It was a fake cheating twenty. Yeah, that, that's that's Vigo. 
the smell is too close to be anyone else. Yeah. Uh, I'll try and make meaningful eye contact with everybody, but I don't think I do a good job. <laughs> Shall we follow him? What is Jennifer's meaningful eye contact? It's like... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll hold up my paws and make a V-shape. <laughs> <laughs> but they're so tiny, it just, it's just... Yeah, it's really work, I think. It's, yeah, with little, yeah, it's like it's little hearts. <laughs> Shall we follow him? Yes, shall we follow him surreptitiously? Because he knows it's us, so... Yeah, we'll follow at a distance, I guess. But he's also sneaky, so I'm going to keep an eye out to make sure he doesn't duck away into any alleys. Okay, roll a perception check then. You're not being sneaky, did you say? No, I don't think so. Okay. But we're not right behind him. Okay. I would watch from above. Okay. Oops, upwards, and there's a bit of a rooftop clamber. Okay, I would say you roll a separate perception check then, Simon, because... 17 from 17, me. okay. Oh, snap. Okay, so you start to follow in your slightly different ways, and you notice that the person that you know to be Vigo is not trying to duck or dodge away from you, but certainly seems to be leading you somewhere. And given your insight into who he is even though you don't know him terribly well it doesn't look like he's panicking obviously it's difficult because you can't really read expression on this cloaked figure but it looks a very deliberate thing and it doesn't look shifty in any way it looks like perhaps he's taking you to a place where you can talk without being disturbed great that's what i was hoping for it's a few minutes later you've headed in a westerly direction and then eventually you find this cloaked figure leaning against the wall, but it's slightly odd because the illusion goes into the wall a little bit. You sense that the person underneath the illusion is leaning against the wall, but because they're shorter, it's bowed oddly. And it looks like maybe he's forgotten that he's got the illusion on. And then you hear the familiar voice go, well, shit, he actually persuaded you to do it. Yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm quite easily persuaded. We also didn't want to die. Yeah, that's a reasonable want in life. So. I see you're spying very well as usual, and I'll just look at the obviously like bad <laughs> illusion. Oh shit! Um, yeah, I, I and he stands up straight, and it just shimmers almost like static as it comes back. Yeah, I forgot. Uh, shit! I thought we were meant to be the incompetent ones. Okay, I briefly forget because I suddenly bump into people that I actually know. I didn't realize that you would actually find me this quickly or be here, so... We are very competent. Yeah, sure. Maybe, maybe it's a double bluff. Maybe we are the real spies. Yeah. yeah and you're maybe, a distraction. Maybe that... there's three sets of spies. Yeah. <laughs> he just hires groups of incompetent people. <laughs> I mean, I, I, and it just goes in them... itself. <laughs> I hope one of them gets the job done. <laughs> to be fair, I wouldn't put it past him. That seems like the kind of thing we do. So, uh, what are our plans now? Well, we thought, yes, we do that. Sounds good. Might be good to get out of, you know, get somewhere a little more private. Yeah. Okay. So uh, you're buying, right? I mean, sure. I have lots of samples in my bag. I got the last one. (laughs) I've got this one. Come on, let's go. Okay. It is a little bit tense as you start to walk away. The easy repartee that you had with Vigo when going through hell even as stressful as that was literally yeah (laughs) seems a little bit more withdrawn (laughs) and as you walk along he's not as talkative as he was during that time you've not been parted from him for that long but there is a definitive tension to him which means that the conversation is quite stilted do you head back to your place of staying or somewhere in the high tier when we were at our place, did it seem like the kind of place we could have a meeting without being overheard? You could go into one of the rooms. Yeah. They're not massive, but you would probably all fit if some of you sat on the bed and some of you on the floor. I think that makes sense. not to overfill the behaviour of all. <laughs> <laughs> Rookie error. Okay, so you head back down the tiers of Eileen to have a chat with your once again found ally Vigo. And that is where we will close tonight's session. Thank you very much yeah. for playing. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for listening. Like, subscribe, review, all that good stuff. Follow us on Twitter. You know the drill. Everybody who wants to say bye, say bye. Bye, bye, bye. Bye.